stretching across the continents to provide you positive, relevant, and balanced information with fresh insight from those in the know, right in the land, focusing a biblical lens on Israel and the Middle East. You're watching Focal Point. Welcome to another informative edition of Focal Point, where we endeavor to bring you a positive and relevant report about the issues affecting Israel and the Middle East. We are so glad you're able to join us today. We absolutely are, and as always, we're going to bring you valuable insight today from real life stories of people right in the land of Israel. Stacy, what are some of the things coming up for our viewers? Well, a little later, we sit down with a lifelong volunteer who shares his wisdom on the need to help others in the land. And after that, Dan Tracy brings us a wonderful interview from a musician and songwriter who's using his talents for the Lord. And you won't want to miss our discussion with Arnold Roth. He shares the challenges of going forward after losing his 15-year-old daughter, Malki during a horrific homicide bombing more than a decade ago. Starting things off, however, we want to introduce you to teacher and motivational speaker, Christine Sakaki Barra. A native of Australia, Christine shares her heart on the purpose and realities of faith as it pertains to living life in Israel. Ben Gurion said, anyone who chooses to live here and doesn't have faith will never survive. The Word of God says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Uh, living through, we lived through two intifadas, which are called uprisings. From 2000 to the year 2006, it was the most violent period for the civilian population of Israel. Our neighborhood of French Hill had more bombings than any other neighborhood in Jerusalem. Uh, my family in particular was went through numerous incidents. Right here on the main street, we had a huge car bomb go off. It blew out all the windows of our building. I was thrown to the floor of my kitchen. The flames were leaping up, and all of a sudden I realized my daughter had just walked out the door to go to school. I ran outside, all of my neighbors, and I told them, Mari's out there somewhere. I don't know where she is. That's a moment that as a mother is the most terrifying moment of all. You don't know if you've lost your child or not. But as the smoke settled, we looked around and there was standing my daughter Mari like this and all around her were pieces of metal from the car, all burning, and not a hair on her head was singed. That's one story, and I could tell others, of her school bus that was bombed, of her friends that were killed, of the chairs that were left empty in the classroom. How can a child move on after that? There's only one way they can move on, they determined to continue to build this country in memory of their friends. It affects you, it changes you, but it gives you grit. And it de you determine that you will not allow terror to break you. And I once was in a taxi on the way to the airport and I said to the taxi driver, listen, I'm going to do some speaking overseas and I've got to sound really, really smart so I'd just like to ask you, how is the, what in one word, how could you describe Israel or Israelis? And he said, resilience. It doesn't matter what the world throws at us. We'll get up and we'll find a way to cope. We're resilient as a nation. And it's for one reason that they're resilient. Because God said, Though others forsake you, I will never forsake you. So at the end of the day, prayer is the most vital element that those who love Israel, if you can't physically get to Israel, then get down to praying for Israel. Start off simple, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and then expand as if you're on a military operation. Pick up the map of Israel. Look at the border towns. Look at Metula, Kiryat Shmona in the north. 
pray for them. Go to the south. Look at the names of the communities in the south. Go to the Jordanian border. Look at the names of the communities there. Pick out little communities and pray for them by name. You know, it's wonderful to be specific. And you'll be amazed when you begin to get newsletters from Israel how you'll pick up a paper and it'll say, a missile was fired at that community, but it fell short. It missed. No one was injured. Your position, your call as a Christian, is to pray for those in authority. Lord, give them wisdom. Lord, give them understanding. Lord, open their eyes and their ears. Lord, meet them in the night. Lord, give them dreams and visions. Learn to pray in a positive way and you will see miracles. After a short break, we sit down with lifelong volunteer Norman Feingold, who discusses his involvement with helping to save lives in Israel. And later, we hear the amazing story of helping those in need, all in the memory of life tragically lost during the Second Intifada. But right now, we want you to take a look at an amazing hands-on ministry right in the heart of Jerusalem. For over 25 years, Christian Friends of Israel has been ministering to the people of the biblical heartland, one life at a time. My name is Ray Sanders. I'm the executive director and co-founder of Christian Friends of Israel Jerusalem. We welcome you to our program today and trust that things that are shared with you will be an encouragement to you as you seek to bless and to serve the Jewish people. Thank you for joining us. You know, Jerusalem has a real spiritual significance behind it. It's the city of the great king. So much has happened here through history and so much will happen here in the future. We ask that you would become watchmen on the walls for Israel. And we have a wall of prayer program that's online. We have a number of online publications and all you have to do is go to our website and sign up. And we have a new distribution center in Jerusalem that's been restored and remodeled. We opened it in the 1990s and over a quarter of a million Russian Jews have been helped through clothing, through appliances, uh, bedding, bath, and financial help. CFI has a bridal salon where we help Jewish brides to be blessed upon their wedding day, a very special gift from the nations. Streams of Blessing is for the very poorest of the poor and needy throughout Israel. Walk-ins off of the street, uh, former war veterans who fought in the Red Army. Hope for the Future helps the Ethiopian Jewry who's come on some miraculous airlifts. They have a lot of needs that they have. Forsake Them Not reaches out to Jewish people who have suffered during the Holocaust that are still alive in their 80s and 90s and they need to know that we care, that we're on the ground helping them with all the needs that they have. And under his wings and communities under attack are the, is the program that we help uh, those who are suffering under terror attacks in the south of Israel and in various other cities throughout the land. First Fruits is our ministry to believers in the land, be they Jewish or Arab or Gentile, we help all alike, encourage them in their walk of faith. So if you want to help undo damage that was done in the name of the church for 2,000 years, we ask you to join us. Come alongside of us, partner with us, and let us change history and the world that all may see that we're making a difference in Israel, in Israel amongst the church and amongst all those who want to be a blessing. We're here for you to be your hands and feet in Israel. Partner with us today and help us change history. Shalom, Shalom from, from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. To partner with the Ministry of Christian Friends of Israel through prayer, volunteering, or financial gifts, please visit cfijerusalem.org. Welcome back. Norman Feingold, the founder of Christian Friends of Maganda Vida Dome, has been helping others nearly all his life. He recently shared with us the importance of helping and healing those in need. 
became attached to Magen David Adam, which is the ambulance service, the life-saving service of the State of Israel, because it had no prejudice. If somebody is ill, somebody is sick, you don't stop the vehicle in the middle of the road and say, Mister, are you Christian? Are you Jewish? Are you Arab? Are you Muslim? Are you the highest? Are you whatever? Druze? You pick them up. No bias. No bias whatsoever. It's there for all people, regardless of who. No questions asked. It doesn't say, are you black? Are you white? Are you Chinese? You're in need of help? Pick up, get to the hospital as fast as you can. Give resuscitation as fast as you can. Preserve the life because God gave that life. Little boys playing football break their legs. And what do they need? An ambulance. A lady's pregnant with her first child and difficulties. What does she need? An ambulance. A man of my age has a heart attack. And he's lying prone on the floor, gasping possibly with his last breath. What does he need? An ambulance. It is the only organization of its size in the world that can boast 84% of all its people, 84% are volunteers. We've got Jewish drivers. We've got Arab paramedics. We've got Christian paramedics. We've got Jewish paramedics, and they all do it because they're instruments of the Almighty in saving life. That's why I believe, by the way, that every Christian should be supportive. Every Christian who is a Christian, a true Christian, should be supportive of Magin Dublin, and you should all make contributions. Put something of yourself into this land. Prayer alone is not sufficient. Goodwill alone is not sufficient. Visit the land. Make it the holiday of your lifetime. Make it a journey that you shall remember forever. Make it an aspiration. If you save up £200 a year for five years and whatever it may cost, let that five years that come, let that be a fulfillment. Come to the land of Israel. You'll be welcome. Believe me, you'll be welcome. You'll be loved it. And you'll be given all the blessing because the Almighty will bless your coming. And at the end of your days, and we talk about end of days, at the end of your days, isn't it wonderful again? Isn't it even an exhilarating thought that you shall have visited the land of Israel? In Israel, you can walk through the streets without chaperones. You can walk around the streets of Tel Aviv or Yerushalayim at night or in Netanya. You can go out of this apartment and walk around free. You can sit by the beach. Midnight, three o'clock in the morning. You can be joyful of this land that God gave you. Without fear, without trepidation. You can walk free. You live in Israel. You know that I'm telling you the truth. You don't have to sit and worry about it. Where else in the Middle East can you do it? I can't even walk down the streets of Manchester in England or in London. Or in New York. Only here. Only here. Where most people don't want to molest anybody else. We want to kiss you on the cheek and say hello. On a recent trip to Israel, Focal Point's Dan Tracy caught up with singer and songwriter Mark Chapinski who shared about leaving his career as a secular musician until one day returning to use his talents for the Lord. You were saying you, you had given up your identity as a musician for a time and then the Lord began to, to give you some songs during that period. Yes. Now you and Paul and the saxophone player Rene, right. was his name, right. um, actually formed the group then called Israel's Hope. That's right. So this creative thing just began to happen. Now, what were some of the songs that, that came out of that? Well, uh, Paul had written a few songs already, one very popular song of his called It Is Good from Psalm 92. Uh -huh. um, I had written a number of songs, uh, but the one that we really became uh, identified with was called Come Let Us Go Up. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Far and wide, swords 
Dogs will be beaten into plowshares, and nations will not learn war again. This came during a personal devotional time where I was reading in the book of Micah, chapter 4. Most people I think I wrote it based on Isaiah 2, but it's the same scriptures in two separate places. Oh, yeah. But I was reading in the book of Micah, and as I'm reading, um, the words took on a cadence and a rhythm in my mind, and a melody started to develop. So I grabbed mm -hmm. the guitar, and I just, in 15 or 20 minutes, the whole thing was totally written. That was one of the beginnings, but in the meantime, there has just been uh, there have been many songs that have come out, and many songs that you've done together with Paul, but also others that you've done on your own. Yes. I know you've just done a um, another project. Can you tell us a little bit about that project? In 2010, here at the prayer conference, uh, I had a word of the Lord come into my heart to do a new recording project of my own compositions in English. And up until that time, uh, doing a project of my own in English wasn't even on the radar, wasn't in my heart at all. It just yeah. came into my spirit. So as I began to pray about it, the Lord gave a few new songs. I had some songs in my songbook that were unrecorded that I thought mm -hmm. were worthy of a project. So uh, we started in on it. And it took about a year or so to do the whole project. Uh, it's called Yes and Amen. It's been picked up by Galilee of the Nations. Your goal was never so much entertainment, but rather bringing people into the presence of God, worship. Right. What, what would you say is, is the difference between those two? Entertainment is oriented towards satisfying the people that are right. sitting out there. Worship is oriented towards giving satisfaction to God for who He is and all that He's done. I guess that's part of maybe what happened when you laid down your identity as a musician? Because obviously before you were into um, entertainment. entertainment. Right, exactly. So how did that work out in your heart? It was a challenge at first because for many, many, many years, my identity as a person was I'm a musician. And my right. purpose as a musician was to entertain the people in the restaurants and the clubs and the concerts. And that was so much a part of me that it took a while for that to work itself out, so, uh, which what I could say is I became dead to that. Uh -huh. uh, it got to the point where inside of my being, there was nothing compelling me to want to go to a nightclub or a restaurant or play the type of music that I did before. All I wanted to do was take this talent that God had given me and use it to bless Him and honor Him and worship Him. Well, Mark, I want to say thanks very much. For your time thanks for talking to us yeah and sharing your heart fascinating story and thank you also so much for your faithfulness in ministry standing with the lord serving him with everything that he's given to you yeah, i just want to say bless you for everything that god has in store for you yet praise the lord coming up after a short break you won't want to miss our discussion with arnold roth as he shares the difficult process of rebuilding life after the tragic loss of his 15-year-old daughter at the hands of a homicide bomber. But before that, we want you to take another close-up look into the ministry efforts of Christian Friends of Israel in Jerusalem, with nine distinct outreach projects designed to help the real-life needs of people right in the land. Shalom, my name is Ray Sanders. I'm the Executive Director and Co-Founder of Christian Friends of Jerusalem. We welcome you to our program today trust you'll be blessed by all that we share of what's happening in Israel in these last days. Thank you for being with us. Ray and I live in the greatest city on earth, Jerusalem. Here was where the beginning of Christian Friends of Israel started, and we now have representatives in nations around the world. And we have a new distribution center in Jerusalem that's been restored and remodeled. We opened it in the 1990s, and over a quarter of a million Russian Jews have been helped through clothing and through appliances, uh, bedding, bath, and financial help. Forsake Them Not reaches out to Jewish people who have suffered during the Holocaust that are still alive in their 80s and 90s, and they need to know that we care, that we're on the ground helping them with all the needs that they have. 
Hope for the future helps the Ethiopian Jewry, who's come on some miraculous airlifts. They have a lot of needs that they have. CFI has a bridal salon where we help Jewish brides to be blessed upon their wedding day, a very special gift from the nations. Streams of Blessing is for the very poorest of the poor and needy throughout Israel. Walk-ins off of the street, uh, former war veterans who fought in the Red Army, and under his wings and communities under attack are the, is the program that we help uh, those who are suffering under terror attacks in the south of Israel and in various other cities throughout the land. First Fruits is our ministry to believers in the land, be they Jewish or Arab or Gentile. We help all alike, encourage them in their walk of faith. We ask that you would become watchmen on the walls for Israel. And we have a wall of prayer program that's online. We have a number of online publications. And all you have to do is go to our website and sign up. So if you want to help undo damage that was done in the name of the church for 2,000 years, we ask you to join us. Come alongside of us. Partner with us. And let us change history and the world that all may see that we're making a difference in Israel, in Israel amongst the church and amongst all those who want to be a blessing. We're here for you to be your hands and feet in Israel. Partner with us today and help us change history. Shalom from Jerusalem. To partner with the Ministry of Christian Friends of Israel through prayer, volunteering, or financial gifts, please visit cfijerusalem.org. Thanks for staying with us. In 2001, Arnold Roth lost his 15-year-old daughter, Malki, at the hands of a Hamas homicide bomber in downtown Jerusalem. Arnold recently shared with us how God helped his family keep a lasting memory of Malki after that tragic event. In the school holidays of August 2001, on one of the hottest days of those holidays, my daughter Malki uh, spent some time with her best friend, who was also our next door neighbor, decorating the bedroom of a mutual friend who was coming back from overseas that day at the end of her holidays. And when they were done, they decided to come through the center of town and stop off uh, at the pizza place, which they both very much liked and had been at many times. At uh, two o'clock in the afternoon that day, the building was bursting with kids. And you could see that as you walked by because the building in those days had an entirely glass facade. They were standing at the counter, the two girls, when a young man walked in with a guitar case on his back and uh, promptly walked up to the counter and exploded and took with him 15 lives, most of them children, who were killed immediately. A 16th woman has been unconscious from that day until today and about 130 people were maimed in, in ways that are awful to describe. Malki played a central role in galvanizing the family around her youngest sister's special needs. And uh, some of the happiest memories we have of seeing Malki pick up her little sister and carry her with her to bed just so that she could experience that Haya, the sick child, the damaged child, could experience the closeness of another person. Malki understood that you don't get anything out of this. You don't get anything other than the internal satisfaction. There's not going to be a reward. Unfortunately, there's not even going to be a smile. Uh, the goodness in Malki's life was not unique to Malki. There's so much goodness out there. Sometimes you need a tragedy in order to see it and then to apply what that goodness teaches you. The organization we created is called the Malki Foundation, in Hebrew, Karen Malki. We began work on it the minute that we got up from the seven days of the morning, the Shiva. The Malki Foundation does work that has always had a very clear purpose. Its purpose is to empower families who have a special needs child. We help in two principal ways and then the third way requires a little bit of a further explanation. The first is we'll give you equipment. The second thing is we know that your child needs paramedical therapies and we are prepared to 
Take your receipts after you've found the best therapist you can. We'll give you back originally 75%. We're currently giving back 85%. And there are ways that ordinary people, and that's what we certainly are, can make a difference to other ordinary people entirely based on what do we have in common. Right now what we have in common is you want good for your child who's got terrible special needs, severe special needs, and so do we. So now let's work together. You do what the family does, we do what Karen Malky does. And it's a winning formula. We're doing good things, we're doing more and more good things all the time, but it's all focused on those two programs. Now I said there was a third program. We realized that there were people living in the far north and the far south of Israel. Israel is a long, thin country. Those people can't spend the money we would want to give them for their special needs children. They don't have the therapists on whom to spend. So in those cases, the north and the south, we send therapists on wheels. They're our therapists. That's what motivates us. So we write a lot. We speak whenever we can. And if that's our contribution, together with the work of Karen Malky, then I think that we're doing something constructive. Certainly doing something constructive was the passion in Malky's life and we're happy to express an echo of that in the work that we're doing in the wake of her life. We'd like to thank all of our guests today for their time and the tremendous insight that they've shared with us. Here at Focal Point, we constantly strive to keep you informed on real situations going on in Israel. That's right. Not only do we want to keep you up to date on what's going on, we also want to share about ways that you can connect and become a part of what's going on as well. One way you can become involved is to go online right now at CFIJerusalem.org and see the many things happening in Israel with CFI right now. And while you're there, don't forget to email us with your feedback and topic ideas at info at focalpointtv.com. You can always feel free to reach us by calling the number on your screen. We always love hearing from you. As always, we look forward to being with you next time as we turn our point of focus to Israel and the Middle East. Right here on Focal Point. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Goodbye. Focal Point is brought to you by Christian Friends of Israel Jerusalem. For more information about any of today's guests, email us at info at focalpointtv.com. To partner with the Ministry of Christian Friends of Israel through prayer, volunteering, or financial gifts, please visit cfijerusalem.org. Focal Point is a production of Level E Media Incorporated.